Okay, hi and welcome to part 5 of my creating a 2D game in Java tutorial. Sorry about the long wait, I've been very very busy with school. So now that we have our basic sprite classes, our basic frames, all the kind of stuff to draw, start threads and games and render, now we can go on and start putting something in our game. So what we've got here is a new class, this time it's abstract because we won't be using this itself we'll be extending this to other classes for every individual entity which is why it's called entity so make it abstract and now we can get the code in first of all every entity we want to know where it is at every time so we need doubles um, an x and y coordinate as it's 2d games These are protected so that they get inherited by the classes which will be inheriting from this class. That probably made no sense. Okay, so, and this is where we use our sprite class. Every entity has its own sprite which can be drawn. Just call it sprite. And then we need a speed. Just because these entities all move. Maybe you want uh, another class, probably uh, abstract, non-move class, something like that, I don't know. But for the purposes of this, I'm just having moving classes, so I'll let you figure out how you want to do the rest. Yes. I'm just using D as rate of change, like calculus or whatever. So uh, next of all we're going to have two rectangles because we wish to bound in box collision detect them. So a rectangle for you and a rectangle for the object which will be colliding with you. Okay wait, a, a rectangle for this entity and a rectangle for the other entity and we compare the both of them. That makes more sense. So private rectangle. And then it should let me import a rectangle. And there we go. Now we can start going on the constructor. So public entity. This takes in the reference for the image. So the file name of the image. Well, yeah, the file name for the image. And then an X and an Y where you want it drawn to start with. you'll find this is where we use our image loader class so everything I've been telling you hasn't been pointless Get. Oops. Mm. and then we just set the starting x y okay that's the constructor done now we're going to allowing our entities to move, as they are all movable entities. Public void move. And we'll just give it a long uh, delta. We'll call it delta for change again, just like the D. So X plus or minus F. Fail. So the change times the rate of change. That makes sense. And then we'll divide by a thousand so it's nice and kind of neat when it's moving. It doesn't, uh, kind of, what's the word? Uh, I don't know. It just makes it nice and smooth. Yeah, smooth. That's it. Same with the Y. It means that it doesn't stay on like one pixel and then go straight to the next one. It can move in between. No, it can't. That's impossible. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It just makes it smooth, okay? Now we can 
set the horizontal movement. This is just so that we can like, um, because they're protected, we can't change them directly, so we need to use functions to do so. So I'll just write these really quickly. There will be a get and a set for the horizontal and vertical. I'll just type these in really, really quickly. You should know what I'm doing here by now. Pretty simple, just setting the variable inside the class into whatever we pass it in. Next two ones return whatever the variable is. As I say, because they're protected, we can't do this directly. Okay, that's our set and return classes. Uh, now we'll go into the draw. So public void draw. Pass it in the graphics component. Draw it to that's just for gravity. And then what we do is we call the draw from the sprite. Uh, sprite. Pass it in G. Pass it in X and Y. Bear in mind that I have to type cast these to ints because they are stored in doubles. And not much more to go, I don't think. Yep, not many more. Uh, to get X and get Y. Get X, yep, get X, get Y. Another two functions which just return values from the protected section. Oh, I can't type. Return. Okay, there we go. And then get Y. Type gas into an int again make my life easier. And then the last one's the uh what's the last one? The last one's the collision detection. Collides with and then it takes another entity. And then we just compare the two rectangles. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Return to rectangle, then use the intersects function to see if they overlap. Pretty simple. So set the bounds. Or int, uh, another typecast. Now you'll see this is why I had all these functions inside the sprite class. Make my life easier when I get to here. And then same with the other entity. Except from this time it's uh yeah. An integer typecast of E dot X and E dot Y and E dot Sprite. My talking skills have really deteriorated. <laughs> right, so e dot sprite. Okay, and then we just return true or false if it intersects. So return. Yeah, make that abstract. 
public abstract int and there we go that's the entity class done so in the next lesson I'll go over and have a look at creating an entity and putting it in game and then showing you it working thanks for watching